Hmm, we got a tragic here and welcome back to Mage Knight. Let's get into this. We've got quite a lot to get through uh, today because I want to talk about uh, some rules as well. First thing though is Goldex actually leveled up to a new shield when he killed that, uh, you know, lots of XP stuff. So he's actually got the next shield out, which means he's now six uh, hand size, which means he can draw to eight cards. The reason he can draw to eight cards is because he's got two of those uh, conquered keep that he's next to. But also there was a bit of confusion about ambush. Uh, people are a bit confused about this card from the comments. So I just want to quickly go through it. Basically, if you look at this card, it says that uh, add to your first attack card of any type or your first block card of any type. And then the bottom one is add to your first attack card of any type or your any block card of any type, whichever you play first this turn. Now, that leads a lot of people to believe that you, if you choose to block, that uses up the card because it's whatever card you play first. So to use the attack ability, you have to not block. And that is kind of true. That's the way it used to be. But there was a number of changes to the core mechanics of Mage Knight that happened in Lost Legion, sort of like a rata to the rule book that fixes or changes a lot of the timing issues to make the game flow a lot easier and reduce AP and, you know, make the cards more thematic and ambush was one of the cards affected by the new timing rules so if i find the lost legion rules which really is the rule set you should be reading yeah there's a section here called detailed game concepts now a lot of people skip reading this because oh, they go oh i've already read i know the mage knight rules I don't need to read the, these uh, detailed rules because it's just repeating. It's actually not. They actually changed quite a lot of stuff with how the timing works. Media effects, composite effects, etc, etc, etc. And one of the cards adjusted is Ambush. And it's got its own little section here. This is page 9. So you can still play Ambush the way you used to, as in before before the uh during the move phase and all this kind of stuff in addition you can also play it during the combat even if you do not use the move points in that case it does not have to even be your first attack or block you can play it just before the attack or block you want to affect so there is no provisions on ambush anymore you can play it in the move round or you can play it as a insta speed action at any point during your combat which makes this card much much better and they changed a lot of things like agility was changed they changed how the movement in mazes works uh, there's oh, tons of stuff uh, tirelessness was changed so make sure you check out the detailed concepts uh, pages before you play because there's a lot of really good improvements and you've got to remember that Unlike Tesla, Shades uh, uh, Lost Legion was written by the original designer, and he has said many times publicly that Tesla, uh, that uh, Lost Legion is the version of the game that you should play. He said it's all balanced. the The whole game is balanced for Lost Legion, and uh, he recommends you never unmix the the new action cards. You never unmix the pugs. Uh, I suspect that. Lost Legion was originally part of the original set and was split out for uh, for uh, marketing reasons by WizKids. I don't know proof of that. Anyway, the point I'm trying to get to here is that uh, Ambush, I used Ambush correctly. Now, when I play Ambush, I kind of mix the two rules because I really like the idea of Ambush being limited to the first or last and I like the idea of it being played during the movement phase. Like the idea is that you're, you spend movement points, even if you don't move, to set up your ambush. So I, I still like to play it. 
I always for force myself to play it in the movement and then I can just choose to use my first attack or first block. So I actually don't use this exactly the way I'm supposed to. I kind of nerf it a little bit in my games. And when you play a game quite a lot, you'll, you kind of forget what are your rules and what are the game rules. So uh, that's why I played it the way I did. So I always play it in the movement phase, and that way the little icon on the top left still makes sense. And I can do it to my first attack or my first block. But technically, you can play it at any speed you want before any attack or block. Anyway, let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, it's his turn, so let's draw to eight cards. And what have we got here? We've got quite a lot of action. We've got plenty of range. We've got will focus. Oh, look at this. We've got Wrath and we've got Mana Bolt. So we've got tons of action. And we've only got six cards left after this because we're drawing so many. We should have taken... Uh, he should have taken the right moment, maybe. Oh, no, it's actually... Yeah, I think the Long Night is the one that he'll take next turn because he's drawing so much. Okay, so let's have a look where he is. So he hasn't got long to play. He hasn't used his flight yet. What I would like to do is take over this place and then move into here. Maybe have time to take over that dungeon and then I can fly out at the beginning of next turn. Because I can't explore off this area here. This this is off the, off the cone. And I can't explore here because we're only up we're up to you know the the gold tiles now right and gold tiles have a slightly different placing rule whenever you place a gold tile it has to touch two other tiles so i can't explore anywhere where it's not going to touch another tile so uh, that's a valid spot for example because it's touching this tile and this tile what that's basically meaning is that this is the exploration point for this tile i have to explore off here but I would like to get this uh, dungeon before I go. Now his flight ability allows him to skip over a place for two points or go to the adjacent space for no points, but you have to land in safe spaces. So if I can take this, it's not too hard for me to go to here and like I said, I've only got six cards left in my deck, so I could probably take that, use my, take this, use my flight to get in there, and then next turn I can use my flight to get out across these mountains, and that'll, uh, you know, or at least come back here and buy gold units. So I'm pretty sure that's his plan. So basically what we're looking for is four, five, six movement because I'm absolutely confident we can kill whatever we find because we have five, ten siege attacks. So we're basically immortal. What we really need is a ability that increases our siege attack by one. There is none in the offer, unfortunately. We basically need this ability here because six siege attack is enough to kill pretty much anything except for dragons and uh, city units. Okay, let's do this. What have we got? Um, we don't have any movement except for my awesome... I, I want to keep them if I can for when I do the dungeon. Uh, we've got a will of focus. Peaceful moment. Now, here's... If he takes that tower, he's going to be negative three. That means that this is going to be 10 to buy, for example. There is nothing else. Oh, yeah, there's this as well. That'll also be 10 to buy. This produces six, seven, eight, nine. 10. So if I want to buy a unit, I need all of those cards. I need all of these cards. 
so I can't chuck any out which means I don't want to use these things. So well, first thing I'm going to do is just use Tranquility and draw one card and see if I get a move card, which I do. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go four. I'm going to pay with a blue mana. This is interesting. How am I going to do this? That gets me in, but I still need to... That's four to get in there, right? I think I'm gonna to have to spend one of my swiftnesses, unfortunately. I really don't wanna do that, though. What have I spent? I spent my attack and my attack... Oh, so I spent both my attacks. I've got plenty of move left over, though. I've used hardly any in my move. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go like that. Oh well, it has to be done. So that is one, two, and then one, two, three, four gets me into this location. Okay, Flippy Roni. Okay, so this is a nasty guy. He has immunity, a magic immunity, and he has six armor. He's got a nasty attack with wounds, but it's not really an issue for us because he's got so much siege attack. Now, remember, the way immunity works is that it doesn't affect cards that have attack or block. The enemy is not affected by non-attack, non-block effects. So that means that you know, this spell is a spell, but we can still use it because it's an attack effect. So we want to flip pay. We're going to flip over this. Yoink. That gives us a blue crystal and a red crystal. Oh, a blue crystal and a red mana token. I'm going to spend the blue crystal on this. And I think it's green, if I remember correctly. Uh, if you pay green, it sees attack five. So the way this works is that you pay the mana for the for the actual spell and then you pay a, another mana to define the type of attack. So green mana gives us siege ice attack five, which uh, is fine. He doesn't have any immunity luckily. And then I'm just gonna play Horn of Wrath. That gives me another siege attack five. So that's siege attack 10. Again, it sounds incredibly, uh, you know, overkill to do 10 siege attack to kill a six unit but then that's what i have to do and look that's it and i don't need this red crystal at all so i'm going to get rid of it yeah blamo okay so he goes down to negative three and he gets another five reps that's one uh one two three four Five. Yonk, and he levels up. Beautiful. So now that he's leveled up, we can uh, see what he's got coming. Uh, yonk, and yonk. Okay, so this influence card is not particularly good, I, I think. Because once a turn during interaction, so it only works during interactions, you get if you get influence one for each different color crystal in your inventory. So I would have influence this would give me influence three. But it cannot be used outside of interaction, so it's completely useless. See for example, this one here on her own, right, gives you three in influence if you're not recruiting a unit, and you can use it any time during your turn. It also gives you one for recruiting. And the big difference is, but if you need a skill that's giving you influence, you usually have terrible rep, okay? And when you have terrible rep, it's very, very good to take things like thugs, right? But the thing about thugs is they're cheap, they have a huge amount of armor, five armor, but you cannot assign damage to them unless you pay influence. But if you have one of those influence skills, you don't have to pay anything to use them. They become just a super cheap, easy to hire unit that you can just kill off and heal really easily because they're level one. A very, very good unit for uh, bad guys. But his Glittering Fortune isn't any good. Uh, maybe I'll take one of these. He could take 
this. What? What's? Ah, intimidate is the only thing he gets. It's not really what he wants. Mountain Law. That is the coolest card of all. Yeah. Okay. So what he's going to do? He's going to put this in here. He's going to take Mountain Law. And he's going to take this, which is one of the best uh, combat skills in the game. Basically, this freezes the mana and allows other people not to use it. Plus, it generates crystals. It's super, super strong. He could actually buy a unit right now. But instead, he's going to uh, wait a turn just in case. Because he doesn't want to use his green crystal here. He'd have to use a green and a white crystal to do that. Which is a... Uh, doesn't really want to do. Um, you know what I noticed in editing is that I forgot to take a spell after I took over this mage tower. So basically we've got crystal generation, flame wall, and space bending, which is freaking awesome. Space bending would actually be really good for him, but he's already got flight. But space bending and flight is kind of broken. Even so, I think I'm actually going to take the, the straight up combat spell. So I'm just going to put that into his deck, which I've, I've kind of cleared things so things aren't spoiled. Okay, so... Ooh! Start Resolve. Start Resolve is a super good card. What am I going to do here? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Five. Okay, so that's all passed. Yoink. Now it is your turn, hey? Now, he's, she's in a similar kind of position. You're very tempted to take dungeons. Remember, taking dungeons is how you win this game. So I really should take that dungeon, but there's quite a few cards still to explore. And if I take that dungeon, it's then 5, 10 to move out. It's pretty harsh. What's a card situation? Oh dear, it's pretty dire, isn't it? We've got one mana. We've got mana pool. Yeah, I think... Uh, how do you score this game again? I've forgotten how to score it. Uh, you score it... Oh, wrong button. You score it... Uh, where is it? Dungeon Lords up here. Achieving a type, dungeons and tombs are worth four instead of two, so they're worth a huge amount. And you get five for greatest dungeon adventure, so it's actually quite a lot. Yeah, so I'm, I am going to go in here. Uh, so what, I spend two to get in. God, I don't have much block, do I? I've got five block. Okay, let's flip this over. What have you got? Yeah, Bambo. Oh, wow. It is a manticore. Oh, I've got tooltips turned on for some reason. There we are. Oop, wrong button. God, I got bought a new keyboard that's a bit quieter, but the space bar is in a different spot, so I keep bashing it by mistake instead of hitting the alt button okay so this is a really nasty dungeon monster he's hard to block he's eight to block right because he's got fast he has fire resistance he's got assassination he's got poison he's all around pretty bad we cannot block this and kill him we need eight to block we can produce five block only Five, that's it. We're going to be five block. We need to produce eight. So he hits us. So we get two wounds. But he's also got poison. So we get another two wounds put into our graveyard. So that is pretty harsh. I am then going to... I don't want to get another wound. So I don't want to use blood rage. So I'm actually going to go five with Blood Rage. 
And I'm going to use this ability here, discard a wound to get a red mana, just so I can get that out of my hand. So that's five, six, seven attack, and that kills him. So that was pretty harsh. Bonk. So that gives us five. One, two, three, four, five. Yoink! And it is a, a dungeon, so we can... I don't know whether I've told you guys this, but uh, I did a little bit of an update to this mod as well. Uh, basically, I put these little bins behind here, so you can just grab out markers to put on the map if you want. Anyway, whatever, what are they doing? Oh yeah, it's a dungeon, so we get to roll the Fabled Dungeon Die. We really want to get a... Uh, artifact, please. Ah, beautiful. So we get an artifact. Yonk, yonk. Emerald green. I do like the. I, I think the the actual rings are underutilized because basically the thing that people forget about the rings are is that they give you fame. So you're guaranteed to get extra fame. Really does help out, especially if you can combo the rings. Uh, I played a game once with a mate of mine, and he he got tons of these rings, and he got multiple cards that allowed him to redraw his deck. You know, like uh, space bending, I think it's called time bending, for example, where it allows you to redo your turn and you take tactics that allowed him to reshuffle his deck. And he was getting so much fame from playing all his rings. It was actually pretty awesome. But we're not going to do that. We are going to take the Endless Game Pouch because that is an extremely good card. Yoink. Uh, just in editing, I noticed that uh, he leveled up and should have been given a shield. So I'll just do that. I've just deleted everything, so nothing's spoiled. But boom, he's got a third shield. Now drawing to six. Yoink. Noise. Your turn. He's drawing up to six. Okay, so we've got mana pull. We've got some movement. We've got some rage and some stuff. So he's going to uh, attack here for starters. Okay, so he needs six attack and three block. So, see that little symbol looks like a two in the corner near the fire resistance? That means he defends other characters. So that is added to the armor of whoever is attacked first. So if you're fighting like three pugs, the first one attack gets this ability. But it works on himself, so he's actually six, not four. But we only need to block three to get past this guy. And we've got basically no defense well we do have tranquility so it's only three damage so yonk he gets one damage in his hand and then i'm just going to go four pay with a red and bam five six so that's six damage he's dead Boomp. And then I'm just going to do Tranquility at the end of my turn to heal that wound. And that is another two. So that's one, two, and he levels up. Yes. God, he's so behind, isn't he? And he also gets a Elementalist token. Oh, Ice Shard. That's one of my favorite Elementalist tokens. It basically adds either... Ice block or ice attack to one of your cards. It's very, very strong, especially when you're fighting end game units. Uh, right, so let's draw out. He's actually leveled up, right? Yeah, so he gets to draw as well. Okay, taunt is a really cool ability, I think. So you can either reduce the reduce one attack when only by one, or increase one attack by one and reduce the armor. So. It's interesting. So basically, you can reduce their armor, but you increase their attack. Or you can reduce their attack. And this one here just gives a crystal and heal. So I'm definitely... 
Well, maybe I'll take... Oh, I don't really want... See, the problem with... When you take an offer from the communal skill offer, for starters, you can never take your own card. But then you're forced to take whatever's at the bottom of the stack, and Intimidate is just not interesting. So I'm going to take Taunt. And then over here, we have Magic Talent, which is very, very nice discard cards and we can use spells as if it was in your hand and you can actually uh, pay mana so it takes two mana and then you can uh, take a spell and keep it I really like this card to be in the witch's hand now spells are really strong in this particular game because all dungeons are night rules so you can do the bottom abilities. Oh, there's space bending. But I think Stout Resolve is probably the best card here, except she he, she doesn't have a lot of wounds, so it's not really something to worry about. Yeah, I'm going to take Magic Talent. I really like Magic Talent. Probably should have taken Stout Resolve. Okay, and your turn. Now, I completely screwed up his turn last turn. Basically, I spent all my cards when I could have just used range attack to kill the guy, which is horrible. Oh, mine read. Beautiful. I love it. Love it. Okay, so we want to get in here, and that'll give us a... Oh, there's a monster to kill too. We can get in there. That'll give us a gold mana for starters, so let's just do that. We need a white. Is there a white in here? Yes. Uh, yeah, so he's going to go... Three, and he's going to do mind read. So the three movement gets him into there. And mind read is a competitive spell. It's one of my favorites. Choose a color, gain a crystal of the chosen color to your inventory. Each other player must discard a spell or action card from their hand. So... I'm going to take, I'm going to take, uh, what kind of crystal do I want? I think I'm just going to take a blue crystal because I have crystallized and that way I can turn this into any color mana if I need. So everyone has to discard a blue. Now, normally when I play multi-hand solo, I like to draw the cards at the start of the player's turn. That, that sort of hides the hands so I can't plan ahead too far and it gives me a bit of surprise. But technically you're supposed to draw at the end of your turn, right? Which means that the end of rounds can sometimes be a bit iffy when you play solo, when I play solo. But also it means that cards like this mana discard thing, I have to draw all the hands now to see what they're holding or everyone behind him anyway. So let's draw him up to five. No blue cards. Let's draw him up to six. He has two blue cards. Oh, does he want to get rid of magic count? Where is he? Here. He definitely wants that movement. He's got eight cards left. Let's have a check out what movement is. Oh, he's only used one move. Oh, he's already used his draw. You know what? I kind of think I'm going to discard Magic Talent. Seems like a waste. And he draws to six cards now because he's no longer next to the turrets. And he's got no blue cards, so he didn't really hit anything. Still, we got rid of one card at least. Now let's try and squeeze in one more turn. First thing he's going to do is this thing here. So the way this works is that you place it in the source and then no one can use dice for this until your next turn. And then when at the end of your next turn, you can take it from the source, source and choose any mana skill. That's a really awesome skill and a very annoying. Uh, but I'll do it after I uh, choose a mana myself. I may as well take a gold and then I'll put this in the source and freeze the source. 
Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, and we'll, oh, what did I want to do? I wanted to do this, didn't I? Yeah, so it's will of focus, peaceful moment. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've made eleven, uh, whatever it's called, reputation, and I'm going to buy another golem. Okay, because remember he's in, he's up here. Now this bloke here, he's going to take out this monster. Oh wait, it's not his turn, is it? It's her turn. Oh yeah, so now she's stuck down here in the middle of nowhere. Let's uh, see what she can do. For starters, we'll do Endless Gems. So the way Endless Gems is, is that you roll two dice and uh, you uh, oh, gold and a black. So the way this works is that black gives me fame and gold is a mana of any color. And I think I'm going to take a white. A white gives us a green and I also get a fame. I'll just leave these dice over here. Fame is good. And yeah, pretty much absolutely nothing to do here. Uh, wow, that's horrible. I think I'm going to actually heal this wound. Even though I like having wounds in her, I've got so many because of that poison. And I'm going to discard influence. We don't need it. Remember, we can't use dice. Okay, your turn. What have you got? Lots of action here. And we've got some mana generation and some crystals. So pretty good. Now he is going to explore. So we need one, two. Oh, he finished on there, so we would have got another red crystal. So he goes one, two, and we're gonna explore here just so that's not as easy to get to for the red. So we go bam. Remember we can't use dice. So I'm going to pay with this is interesting you can use one additional mana die from the source I think I can actually use that while it is there other players cannot use their usual die from the source you can you can use an additional die I actually think I can still use mana draw because it just allows me to use one dice. So I can't use the original die, but I'm allowed to take a second die, which yeah, I think I think that could work. So I'm going to do that. Bam and take a blue. And that gives me 4, so I can go 1 2 and then explore. Bam. Okay, so we have another monastery. Minor storm, nice. Really needed that the first round where I had all those blacks. I think I'm just gonna call it there. And finally, this bloke up here, he wants to ki kill this guy. Can we kill this guy without using mana? That is the question. Let's draw up to six. <laughs> 
And we are on a glade, so we have a gold. So t we've actually got two mana. We should be able to do this. Let's check this out. Okay, so this guy's got two attacks. Both of them are elemental attacks, so that's six to block each. But we actually have one with the land in hand. The second ability of this is really awesome. So block equal to unmodified move cost of the space you are in. And we're in a forest. So what that means is we are five, uh, three, beg your pardon, block. So that's a three block card, basically. But the more interesting thing is this is fire block in the day or ice block at night. So we can use this and power it with this. And that has created three uh, fire block, which blocks the ice attack. Now we've only got three more attack to deal with, which is six to block. So we've got dodge and weave. Now this is an interesting one because dodge and weave does not have a minimum value. It says reduce one enemy attack by four or two attacks of one enemy by two. Now, often cards in this game will say to a minimum value if it requires it. For example, we have Tremor here. Armor cannot be reduced below one or, you know, reduced to a minimum of one or stuff like that. This card does not say that. So if I power this for attack four, it'll reduce that three to a zero, which means that attack will also be negated. Now, what's interesting is for card triggers is unless the card says zero attacks equal block, the attack is still classified as not blocked if you uh, if you uh, reduce it to zero. So it doesn't matter though, because this triggers off whether you take wounds, not whether you've blocked or not. So if I play this and I play my crystallize, I use my mana crystal I created to create a white crystal. That has created f minus four attack. So the three attack is now zero. Because I don't take any wounds, I gain two attack in the next phase. So then I just need to do rage for two attack. And that does the four attack required to kill. Expensive without mana, but uh, done. And here's three. One, two, three. Now, something else I've also had to say, I've already fixed this in the mod that I uploaded, but there was a problem with my uh, shuffling. Uh, I should, I might, I don't know whether I shuffled it. I'm just going to shuffle all these things. So basically, when the setup happened, it wasn't shuffling these uh, correctly after creating the pools. So I'm just going to give them all a shuffle now. But it's been fixed in the in the update. I updated the mod to fix it. And he gets another plus one rep. And he gets another elementalist token. Yonk. Oh, it's probably the best elementalist token in the game. This allows you to swap out of combat your uh, skill for a skill in the offer. Now it doesn't have any provisions, so you can uh, even get your own skills that you've left. And that's really, really strong. There's some great skills in here. We've got movement skills, rep skills, we've got wound manipulation skills, we've got mana generation skills. There's great skills in the offer. And because he's doing pretty well, we haven't really been using the generate much. So we could get rid of that skill and replace it with something a little more interesting at some point. So that is sweet. Okay, so that is the end of that round. Uh, uh, I really overspent to kill that unit. What I could have done is basically not use dodge and weave at all. The unit is only four to kill, right? So I could have used the gold to pay for that, right? So that blocks one. 
and then don't dodge and weave at all and just take one damage. So I take one damage in my hand and then I use crystallize plus the blue mana to create the red mana and that gives us uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? The four attack which kills him. I do know what I'm saying. <laughs> so that gives us the four attack which kills him, right? And that means that next turn I have all these things. I've got Dodge and Weave, Rage and Tremor all in hand at once. So basically it saves us this card. And the reason why it doesn't matter is because we are on a... Uh, we're on a Magic Glade. So at the end of the turn, that gets healed. Your Bammo. That's a nicer turn. Sweet. Okay, so that is that, and I will see you guys next time.